both uh, cross-sections integrity checkers like SVU, which I'm going to introduce you in, in just a few seconds. Uh, and other things I, I will speak about in a minute. So we have tools which check integrity of some operating system elements. Uh, so this is the explicit uh, compromise detection. And we also have cross view based approaches, which are uh, which bases on the fact that uh, we have two methods implemented, like for example, two methods for, for listing the, the, the processes in the, in the system. And one, one method is very deep, like it, it uses some very, uh, very sophisticated method which bases on, uh, on, on looking at internal kernel structures. And the other method is very simple, it just uses the standard, standard API or just uses some standard system programs. And they just compare the, uh, the results from, from both of them and of the processes which, are, which were reported by, by, the, uh, by the first method were, were marked as hidden. Uh, Rootkit Revealer is the example of this cross feed based approach, or the Microsoft recent project uh, Ghostbuster, Strainer Ghostbuster is also, also in this category. And finally, we've got signature based approaches, uh, well, which are just scanning for non, non malware and are very ineffective. So today we, we are going to discuss this, this uh, stuff. So the program which I'm giving you today, uh, System Virginity Verifier, uh, is based on the, on the very simple observation. Uh, all code sections uh, of modules mapped into memory, like system DLLs or, or, or well, just, just the code sections. Uh, Code sections are read-only, right? Code is read-only. Uh, most modern operating systems either forces, either recommends. Uh, the, the program cannot modify its code. Yeah, this, is, this is obvious, right? Yeah. But I, I, I would like to, to make sure that this is obvious for everyone. Like, uh, we, we, have, we have program, the program con is compromised. Compromises of, of code sections, data sections, and some other sections, and code sections should be redone. So the idea, and of course, many rootkits, user mode rootkits, work uh, by hooking code. So they, they make inline code hooking, and this inline code hooking, well, is, is just putting some jumps in front of the uh, function products, for example. So the idea is very simple to catch all those rootkits just to compare all the in-memory mapped code sections with the corresponding sections in the corresponding PE files for the corresponding modules. So for example, we've got TCP IP sys module. This is, this is the file. This is the file which is located somewhere in uh, C slash Windows slash system 32 slash drivers directory, directory. And we also have uh, memory. And somewhere in the kernel memory there is a module which is called TCP IP sys. So to make sure that nobody hooked code in this TCP IP sys module, we just compare the, the code section with the code section in the corresponding file on disk. If they are different, we have infections. If they are not, we have no infections uh, of this class of root. This, is, this sounds very, very, very simple, but uh, we see that there are some, some problems. Of course, we need to, we, we, we shouldn't forget about doing fix-ups, so result all the relocations, so, uh, so that the, all, the, all, the, all the places where, where uh, addresses, absolute addresses are referenced will be the same, because we are making byte-to-byte -byte, uh, comparison. Is it, is it clear or should I go faster or slower? Is it too simple or just, just okay? Uh, okay, uh, this idea, this is, this is the very simple idea. I was speaking about this idea for years, and surprisingly, for years, I have seen no tool to make this a code section comparison, or to make this code section uh, verification. Uh, one tool which, which I was always using in the past, uh, it was kernel debugger, and I was using, using check image command, which we will see in the demo just in a few minutes. And, and that's all. And that's funny because this is one of the basic things which we should uh, which we should make sure that the, the well, 
the convergence is one of the first things we should make sure if we are talking about system compromise. Uh, system compromise detection. So this, this idea is very simple, but unfortunately it's not very simple when we start implementing it. Uh, implementing it. Uh, first of all, um, rootkit technology, so called rootkit technology, so uh, in this case inline code hooking. Inline code hooking is uh, widely used by many other tools which are not rootkit. Tools like personal firewalls, behavior blocking systems, uh, some monitoring tools like, like for example, some Kaspersky interviews or whatever. Uh, system tracing tools uh, like the back view or file monitor or many other uh, tools which, which, which hook something in the, in the, the LS or, or maybe in the service description table just to, just to, just to uh, control the flow of, of, of execution. So, uh, because SVV, uh, as I said, is, uh, uh, was a module for commercial antivirus system, uh, we obviously need to, need to take care of, of detecting the false positives and not, not uh, report it as, as, as infections. So this is the one problem. How to deal with, with innocent hooking? Innocent hooking, so hooking by like this, this level tools. But uh, first, another problem, uh, well, I noticed another problem which I didn't know about it before this, and this was self-modifying kernel in Windows. So, as I said, at the, at the beginning I said uh, all code sections should be read-only, right? And this is a very, very obvious, obvious thing. Unfortunately, two modules, two core modules of Windows operating systems uh, are exemption from, from this rule. Uh, those two modules are NTOS kernel, which is so the, the core kernel, and how they are Maybe it's a good time for a demo now. Can you switch the levels? We got Windows XP here, but it doesn't really matter if it's Windows XP or Windows 2001 or Windows 2003. So this is uh, this is this is command line, and this is uh, can you see this? This is KD. This is kernel debugger. I try to make the phone bigger. Okay, can you see this now? Uh, okay. So there's a good, no, there's one on checking each command, which we can use to verify. To verify, well, particular module. Here it says zero errors in module and there was kernel access. Zero errors means that uh, kernel, well, what, what KD just, just, uh, just did? It just, uh, just did the same thing which SVV is, is going to do. It just reads the NTUS kernel exit from the, from the uh, file system, compares uh, to some uh, relocations, compare it with the, uh, with the module mapped in the, in, the, in, the, um, in the memory. And says no differences. And we are happy because no differences, so code is read only and this is okay. Unfortunately, this is, this is cheating. Because if we use no spets option, which instructs kernel debugger not to filter out known kernel code self modification, we can see that in fact there are four places in this kernel which were modified. Those errors mean uh, the, the, the code on the disk is different than the code in memory. Uh, do you have an idea why why Windows kernel does such thing? Anybody? I can I can read you the, the name of the functions. It's uh, the name of the functions which body was uh, was uh, modified. This is uh, RTL prefetch memory not temporal. Uh, the next function is uh, key flash current TV. The another one 